um, one of the things I've done is I went ahead and set up like a quick example for chapter seven. I know like there's a few people who've messaged me and we're kind of confused about like the whole one driver thing whenever I was talking about chapter seven. Um, so basically what I did was I just imported some classes in here, right? So this is a class that I took from the book. It's the account one. I didn't, I didn't make any changes it asked me to make. This is the address class that the student class uses. So this is the student object from the book and this is the uh, address class. So the student object in the book takes in a first name, last name, address of the home, address of the school. And then I also, I also just brought in the die. I know, it, I know the chapter seven didn't really ask you about the die, but I just brought it in anyway. And so here's a die class from the book. Let me shoot, what the heck? And I, I just created a pair die class. And I went ahead and just threw in like Java doc comments because uh, I know there's also questions about like how to do Java documentation comments. So I went ahead and documented this one class exactly like how I thought it should be documented based on like what I would do if this is a class for uh, like for my work, right? So I just, I just described the class, like this class is used to manage two die objects. The die objects are stored in, in an array and this class provides methods to get, set, roll, and sum the die face values. So I know in ch chapter four, we didn't really know about arrays, but I went ahead and just made an array to hold two items. And then inside of the constructor, I instantiate the array to hold two items. And I put the, then I instantiate two die objects and I place them into the array. We're gonna talk about arrays in chapter eight. That's actually the next chapter we're gonna talk about. Um, I'm not gonna get into it today. We're gonna, I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and put that off until next week because there's a lot of things to talk about with that. Uh, it'll probably be like a week, week and a half topic maybe. Um, but we'll start that next next week. So the Java dot comment I left on my constructor, and really all you got to do is just to kind of explain what you do in your constructor, and that's exactly what I did. Uh, this constructor will instantiate an array and two die objects. It will store the two die objects into the array for ease of management. And then the getters and setters. Now normally, like most people, don't really make Java dot comment for getters or setters, but some companies do require you. Like I know where I work at now. Uh, the consensus is you don't really need to, to document a getter, et cetera, if it doesn't do anything other than set the value, get the value. If you're going to put like some type of filter on it or you have an if statement, then yeah, you should probably explain like what the if statement actually does inside of a Java comment. So like for the setters, I just real simple, sets the face value for die one. I created one called set face value and, and the value that you pass in, like, uh, IntelliJ will create this parameter for you and label it because I labeled it val and I just kind of just put a label on it or explain what that variable is. And I said that value or the, val the value that is the value to use when setting the die face value or die one face value. So the exact same thing for die two, I believe. I think I used, I copied and pasted to just change one and two. Uh, the getter gets and returns the die one face value and then the return, I just put an integer value of die one's face value. Okay, and all this does is just call get face value on die one. Now, I, I made the assumption that die one is at index zero of the array and die two is at index one. All right, so those, those uh, Java dot comments are the same. And then like, there's some special methods in here that aren't getters and setters. So I have this role, <coughs> excuse me. I have this role method, and I said this method will iterate the array of die objects and invoke all and, and invoke role on each one, right? And that's exactly what it does. Is I just iterate through my array and just call role on uh, those die objects, right? There's only two, but that's what I do. I could have just easily just did uh, dice at index zero dot roll, dice at index one dot roll. It would, been, it would have been the same thing, but I decided to be a little fancy in case I ever wanted to. Um, add more die objects to that array. Um, the next one is get sum of dice. That's another method that the, if you did the chapter four homework, that the book asked you to put in that method. So I just described it as this method will iterate the array of die objects and sum the face value, the face values. The method will return the sum of face values. 
and then for the return, I just put return to integer that will that is the sum of face values for for the pair of dice. And then I describe my two string. Um, I don't know. Most I mean, like I said, like normally people don't put Java dot comments on two strings, but I went ahead and just did it anyway. Um, then the equals method that I kind of think is important to document if you're going to overwrite it because I want to know like. Yeah, a programmer would want to know like what you're doing to consider an object equal to another object. So in my explanation, I put this method will check equality of two die objects by comparing the sum of face values. So that's that's my only criteria. If a pair of dice is equal to another pair of dice, is if the sum is the same. So that means if you get a five and a one and a three and a three, then I'm going to say those two objects are the same. If you look at the way I did it, I know you can right click auto gen. I don't, I mean, I, I kind of feel like some of that stuff is wrong. Uh, but all I had to do was just check to see if the object is an instance of a pair of dice. And if it's null, it's not going to go inside of here. So, meaning if this object that's passed in is null, uh, even if it's a pair of dice, even if it's, the object reference variable was declared to be a pair of dice, uh, if it wasn't set to any instance, it's going to be null. If you pass that into here, it's not going to be an instance of paradise. It's going to be null, so it's going to return false. Okay. Um, so then really all I check is if the sum of dice are equal to each other. If they are, return true. If they're not, return false. Pretty simple, right? Um, yeah. And we'll talk more about arrays in chapter 8, which is the next chapter. But... Yeah, that's the way I decided to do the pair of dice. And the test, this is the way I did the test. I guess I should probably delete all this and start over. I'm just gonna like delete this for now so I can kind of explain something. Um, I'm just gonna control X that. Okay, so in, cha in the chapter four homework, what I was looking for is, so I have the account that I wanna test, I have the student I wanna test, and I have the pair of dice that I wanna test. So I have a main method in my driver class, right? But then I created static methods to test each one of those things that I need to test, right? So I made one called test account, and I just instantiated an account, I printed out what the like the account after instantiated, I deposited fifty dollars, I got the balance, um, <coughs> I made a withdrawal with the fee of two point five, and I just printed out the result. And to me, I felt like okay, I tested that account enough. So these driver classes that I'm having you create aren't necessarily a program that the user is going to interact with, right? Like they're just a driver class for you to verify that your class is doing what it's supposed to do. Okay, that's for chapter four and also chapter seven. Um, yeah, so just make sure you, like I'm not having you make a program that a user is going to log into and interact with, right? For chapter four, it's this, and for chapter seven it's also this I, chapter five and six are actual programs where they want you to calculate the input a year you tell them if it's a um a leap year um things like that right those are like programs that are intended to have an end user that's going to interact with these are driver classes specifically created to test the classes that you created okay um for the test pair of dice that's the way i did it it's kind of long, but what I did was I wanted to test the equals method. That's why I did it this way. I instantiated pair one, and I printed out the value, and then I called roll dice, and I printed out uh, the face value for die one, the face value for die two, and the sum, and then I set the face value to of pair one to five and one, and then I printed out get face value just to see if the set work. Right now, there is no filter on these, like the the one in the book. So there's no like if statement here, right? Um, I kind of feel like the if statement should not be here. The if statement should actually be on the die. Like this is where you'll say, okay, if it's in the range of one and six, you're good. If it's not, it's bad. Um, just because this is the actual die where the pair of dice should probably assume that the die object is gonna handle its own data, right? So. It, it, it does not extending, it has, to, it's managing two die objects inside of its class. All right, so like the way I like to. Uh, 
Well, if you, you ex if you extend it, then you, you're only going to be one die, right? Yeah. You, you create a pair of dice and you extend that die, you can create. So ex extend, extend, means to, extend means to inherit, right? So this is like the way you should think about it is, um, let's see. Is a die is like an object by itself, right? So this is here's a die right here, okay? So here's a die, okay? And like to say, this is the uh, the die object. The services it provides is a set, the get, and the role, right? The data that it's encapsulating is the face value. I'll just say face, okay? Now, if I had two die, I can, in my driver class, if I wanted two die, I can instantiate another die that provides the same services. Right, and this is gonna have a face value as well. So you have the set, you have the get, and you have the role. Right, and the two string and all that stuff, right? Okay, so, the book, what the book wanted you to do is, okay, well, instead of the driver class instantiating two die objects, the driver class only wants to instanti instantiate an object called pair of dice. Okay, so now the interface for pair of dice is to set uh, die one, set die two, get face value of die one and get the face value of die two has a role and has a sum. Okay, so the sum is really the only method that the die is gonna like do on its own, right? So you call sum, it's gonna, sum is gonna, let me change colors real quick. Sum is gonna come in here and call get face value for die one and get face value for die two and then add them together and then return that result, right? Uh, set, face, set face value for die one inside of the pair dice, it's just gonna like pass that value straight to the die one object, right? For die two, it's gonna pass it straight to die two. The same thing for the get and the set, the roll, it's just gonna invoke roll here and here on die one and die two. So like this pair of dice is really just a manager of two die objects, right? So if you look at my pair of dice class, I have an array. That array holds two items, which is that uh, variable is declared right here. And I'm just putting two die objects inside of my array. So like whenever I call set face value for die one, I'm just invoking it on the actual die object that this class is managing. Right, so if I were going to create an if statement to prevent instance data from being bad, that would actually go right here, right? Like if um, value is greater than or equal to one and value is less than or equal to six, then that is the only time you want to actually set the face value, right? Otherwise. Anybody can you can type in like negative nine 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 nine, and if you if you pass in negative nine 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 here, the die object's not going to check it because it's not its instance data. It's just going to pass it straight to that die, and then if you don't have a check there, it's going to set this value right here to negative nine 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 nine. I didn't actually test that because I just felt like <clears throat> that's just I don't know something that the book should have done, but yeah. All right, so when I created, so I'm testing my pair of dice in this class, and then the next thing I do is I create another pair of dice, and I set it to three and three. So the sum of three and three is six, the sum of five and one is six. So then I print out the die objects, and then I just print out true or false if they're equal to each other. Then I go and I change one of the die objects on pair two to one, so I have a three and a one, and that's the sum of that is four. 
the sum of five and one is still six. So then I verify that it's no, they're no longer equal to each other. Okay, then for the student body, uh, for some reason, like the student class is like very minimal. It just has a constructor and a two string, that's it. And this address has a constructor and a two string. So there really wasn't a lot to test. So I just instantiated two objects for addresses and I printed them out. And then I just created a student and I printed it out. There really wasn't a lot to test. Okay, so for chapter four, like what I was expecting to see is, okay, well, you have one driver class for all your classes. Um, really all you're gonna do is just, um, you know, call each one. Okay, and that, there you go. So like now when I run this, it's gonna just run through all my tests for the count and for the pair of dice and print out the results. And then I'll just verify like if the results are correct, all right? So like here is the count stuff right there. This is where I started doing the pair of dice. And then right here is where I started doing the address stuff, the address test. So then what I wanted you to do differently in chapter seven is I wanted you to make an, a, an, like, I want you to take user input but the user input is only gonna decide on what test to actually uh, run. So all you gotta do is just come here and say, okay, well, scanner, scan is equal to new scan. Listen to the keyboard. Okay. And then you're gonna have like a value for what option they wanna look, they wanna do. Okay, and then you can just run a do while. So like do, and then while option, and we'll just say like does not equal Q. We're gonna prompt the user to give us a value for testing account, testing pair of dice, testing student, and then we're gonna give them an option Q to quit. So I'm gonna say if option does not equal, was it red, what the heck? Oh, it might not have been initialized, okay. That makes sense because I haven't initialized it yet. And then I'm gonna make a menu a nice menu, just slap like a, a line above and then a line below. And then like each one of these, I'll just say system out print line. Say like enter, dang it, enter A to run account. All right, and then I'm gonna copy what I did here three more times. So I'm gonna do an A for the account, uh, P for the pair of dice, S for the student, and then a Q to quit. So we'll say P for the pair of dice, um, S for the student, and then a Q to quit. All right, and then we're gonna prompt the user, or the user's gonna enter in his information. And I like to do a system out print line just to kind of cause a little bit of separation up from above. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Well, I don't know. I'm confused on this. Maybe I'll just say something like your option. All right, and then I will say option is equal to scan dot next line dot trim dot char at zero. I'm gonna do two uppercase as well. Two uppercase, because I don't wanna check for lowercase and uppercase. I just wanna check for capital A and a capital uh, P, S, and Q. And then what I could do is just make a switch statement. Switch statements are pretty simple when it comes to like making menus. And I'll just pass in the option here I'll say, okay, if it's an A, I'm gonna do something here, break. Let me copy what I did here. 
paste it three more times. So you have an A, we have a P, an S, and a Q. And then the last thing we'll do is like default. And the default would be when they entered something that is not one of the options. And I'll just say like invalid option. If they enter a Q, that means they want to quit. And I'll just say something like goodbye. S is when they actually we don't have to I'll put anything for S is when they want to do the student test so we'll just invoke the method test student uh, P is when they want to do the pair of dice test so we'll just say test pair of dice the counts test count all right and I'm going to delete that all right and I'm ready to run this program okay I just made a menu now, like before I just called all my tests, right? But now I don't want you guys to do that anymore. I want you to make a menu to where um, if you want to test something specific, you just run your program and enter the option of what you want to test. All right, so I always like to, the first thing I like to test is making sure I can leave this loop. So I'm gonna put a Q to quit and the program ended. The other thing I like to do is enter something that is not an option I'll put a 9 press enter invalid option it's prompting me again I'll put an A the A is gonna run my uh, count test like that's the that's the output that I have for my count this time I'll put a P to run the test for the pair of dice test and this is the output for the pair of dice like all right there or actually this too okay and the last test is the student one I'll put an S and um, here's all the output for that. All right, any questions? Like, that's kind of like what I was expecting. And I know like uh, the homework in chapter seven has you do one thing and then you add to it. Like just, just you can, it's fine to just, just keep adding to it. Like don't worry about preserving what 7.1 asks you to do if 7.2 asks you to change it, right? Like just follow the steps and then whatever the end product is, is what I want to see. Okay. All right. So I know there's also some questions about using interfaces and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and like demonstrate using interfaces on this, on this project that I created. All right. So one of the ones in the book that I didn't assign you, and the reason why I didn't assign it to you is because I thought I'd give it to you as a quiz or something, um, was the one about the lockable interface. And you are going to see that interface on your midterm. Like, that's the, that's the one that I ask you on your midterm. Okay, so let me just go to the problem in Chapter 7. And I believe it's 7.8. Yeah, 7.8. It's actually pretty simple interface to write and it to me it makes perfect sense right so the idea behind this lock lockable is before you even read what it says is okay let me make a couple of things all right so let's just say we have an object here that is an account okay and then we have an object over here that is our pair of dice And then we have our student, which doesn't have any getters and setters on it. So I don't really know how, if it makes sense to put the lockable on it. Okay. So the way the lockable interface is going to work is if I imp if, if account or pair of dice implements that lockable, it's pretty much uh, having you create these methods called, uh, I forgot what they were. I'm going to hop back. It was like set key change key or set key lock unlock locked and i think locked is i don't know they, they did this kind of weird where i feel like locked um should be is locked because it's going to return like a boolean value so that's the one thing that 
like I don't like the, how they did it in a book. Um, normally, when something is a boolean, it asks a question so that you know that it's a boolean. But if you look at this locked here, it says locked is method that returns a boolean indicating whether the object is locked or not. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this interface, and if the pair of dice implements this interface, it's essentially going to have these four new services on it. Okay. So the reason I'm drawing them far out is because now you kind of think about it like, okay, well, now I have this new lockable kind of like on top of this pair of dice, right? And you're going to be able to set the key. Uh, you're going to be able to lock, unlock, and the other one was like a service asking if it's locked or not, okay? So those are like four methods we're gonna throw on top of the pair of dice. Now what these methods are gonna do is set key is going to force us to implement a method that is gonna take an integer that is gonna be the key for locking and unlocking this pair of dice. Okay, if we say that we wanna lock the pair of dice, we're gonna have to enter the key that we set. And if we're gonna lock it, then that means like we're gonna like we're gonna have to go and update our methods to like turn it off, right? So if you're gonna lock a pair of dice, what does that mean? To me, that means you can't use it. So you're gonna lock methods like roll or, or the setter methods, right? Uh, you might be, I mean, you could probably still use the getter methods, but you won't, to me, like locking just means like you're not able to change anything, right? Uh, then if you're, gonna, if you're gonna call unlock, it's gonna allow you to unlock these pair, like this pair of dice so that you can actually use it. And it is locked, it's simply just asking a question. It's gonna return true or false if this pair of dice is locked or unlocked, okay? Then you could throw the same interface, the exact same one on top of your account, right? So that if it's locked, you won't be able to deposit or withdraw. You're only gonna be able to like get your balance. That's pretty much it, right? So you won't be able to change anything, right? So that's kind of like the idea behind it. And the way I like to imagine this is um, you know, like you have your die here. Say if you threw a lockable on a pair of dice. Okay. So uh, here's our die, a pair of dice. We can pick up a die, set die one's face value. We'll just say like this is die, die one here, this is die two. We can set die two's base value. We can pick it up and set it to like five or six, right? We can pick up both of them, roll them, right? And it will change the face value. We can get the face value. And to me, like getting the face value is basically like that. We just observe what's showing on top, right? Like what values are, are showing right there. That's like the get, the, the eyes look kind of crazy. Okay. Um, but if we're going to lock this, it's almost like putting it into like this glass box, right? That has like a padlock on it, right? And this padlock is gonna have like numbers right here, okay? We're gonna like set the key, we're gonna lock it and you can't unlock it unless you know what the key is, right? I mean, we'll be able to like view it, see it, but we won't be able to like roll it unless the box is super light and we just pick it up and roll the entire box, but. And you don't have to change the roll method. You, you will have to change the roll. What's the point? What, what's the point of having an interface? Is you create an interface where you have uh, these four methods that you declare in the interface, and then you go to the object or the class, and have to change the whole thing. So why don't you just create four different classes, and each one with the Long, uh, methods. Okay, Before so. That, because you're doing this. Right. That's the part that I, I can't grasp. Right, so. When the, you talk to uh, about the abstract, that you have some implementation that is common and some that are not, I, I see the fact because now you're using some part of the abstract. In okay. case. Entire class 
Can we right. implement those four methods? Yeah, so I mean, you're right, we are gonna have to go implement those methods, but the way that you have to look at this is abstraction, right? So um, when, I, when I say abstraction, that means the characteristics of a normal die is to get the face value, set the face value into roll, right? So we declare a die object that will do that, okay? Now, if we're gonna say, you know what, I want this die object to be lockable, now we're throwing up throwing additional characteristics that aren't really associated with the die object. So if I want to make this die lockable, I'll have to implement that interface. Those methods are defined in its interface. I do have to implement them inside of my class, but they're not really like part of what a die object actually is. Right? And the benefit of doing that is if I have those methods defined in a separate interface, then other classes can implement those methods. So just say like, what if I, uh, in my die, one of my, I know I wanna have my die lockable, right? So I only define those services inside of my pair of dice here, right? But now I wanna say, you know what? Lockable seems like something I wanna do for an account, right? You've noticed like, you know, suspicious activity on your account, you wanna lock it, right? So that's also something that you want to also do into your, your account. Like that's not really something, I guess, well, I guess technically that would be something that, I mean, that maybe that's not like a characteristic of an account, it being able to lock it, set a key and all that, but it's an interface that you can throw on top of that, right? And then you can use that same interface for other different objects that you want to lock. And now we have what we call polymorphism to where if we want to just grab a collection of things that are lockable, we can just, put them all into one collection and know that those methods exist whenever we want to invoke them, right? So like a, di a pair of dice now doesn't have to be a pair of dice, it could just be lockable. Meaning you know nothing about it being a pair of dice, but you do know that it has the lockable interface so that you can actually lock it and unlock it. Right, that's true. The only way for you to do that is if you create an interface. Right, so it's not, you're not really inheriting. So inheritance means like you're an is, it's a is a relationship. So like, you know, uh, like you, you'll define like an animal class. And then, you know, then a child of the animal class would be like a reptile. And then a child of that reptile would be like a specific type of reptile, like, I don't know, like a okay. snake, right? And then a type of a snake would be like a cobra, right? So you have like all these inheritance where things that an animal can have, right? That all animals can have, but is, but uh, that don't have to be in, in, inside of a cobra would be like, I don't know, uh, age maybe, right? All animals will have an age. Uh, all animals will have, yeah. you know, like just generic attributes. And yes, you inherit some Right. But as you as you keep going down the inheritance chain, your instance data will become more detailed of what pertains to that particular class. So like a cobra would be like how wide his like neck flares out or something, right? Because that's specific to a cobra. Yeah, you're always going from one to one. So you're not inheriting from two different classes. Right. But then like would it make sense if just okay, so say like snake is a cobra like just say you you're you like you own a uh veterinarian shop right and you have a cobra like inside of your database so your program is going to pull that cobra object make and put it into in memory inside of a cobra class okay but say if you wanted to like lock that file you would say i want to lock this so nobody can change it would it make sense that set key uh, lock, unlock, is locked is a characteristic that you'd find on a Cobra. Right? It really wouldn't because that data is specific to an animal, but you want to add an interface to where I don't want that data to change. I'm going to, I want to lock it. Right? So now if you lock that particular uh, Cobra, then 
like nobody can go and change its name or uh, change the date of it or it's the date it was born, you know, stuff like that. So you kind of have to look at it as like methods that don't really define what the object truly is. Okay. Um, if you're writing a program, and I agree with you though. If you're writing like one program and you know, you know what, every single uh, or every single die is always going to have, you know, set key, lock, unlock, and is locked. And I don't plan for any other object in my program to use it. Then yeah, they don't make sense to just put those methods into your pair of dice because that's the only place it's going to be used, right? But just say like, you know what, I implemented this lock, this lock feature in my pair of dice, but I want to I want to use it for, you know, a slot machine, or I want to use it for like whatever your like whatever your program contains. You want to use it for some other class. You want to use it for this class. Then at that point you have to you say okay, well. If, if something is lockable, what are the methods that make it lockable? And that's when you move it to an interface, and then now you can define those classes to have all that, like all those methods of that interface. Yeah. So it's just like the way I see interfaces is just a set of methods that you put on top of a class to make it do something that the original class was not intended to do, right? So comparable is the is a big one right do we want to compare all our objects like would you compare uh i don't know dang well i guess everything would be comparable i mean i would just say like if you don't really need to implement the comparable interface because you'd never plan to sort that data or uh say one is greater than the other then you just would never implement that interface right but it makes sense to have it in most cases because you want to do something different with that object and give it a numeric value that is going to make it like greater than or less than, you know, uh, another, uh, another object of that same class. Right. I mean, that is the true. Well, that that interface were just telling me that you have to do the whole work again over and over again yeah so and that is still true with inheritance but implementing an interface isn't really inheritance it's just uh telling java hey i have these set of methods to find right. yeah and you just add the methods that you need that, is, that are not part of the class that you're inheriting from right so which means that half of Right, but that's only that only happens in inheritance, though. That's right. Yeah. So when I see the interface, that is the opposite. Right, because you're not really it's like, because you're not really inheriting, you're just declaring like, hey, I'm some, I, I can, I'll, like this object can be used to do these set of uh, methods, right? Like just something like is different than what the object was intended to originally be. In this case. I want to lock stuff. To me, it looks like a global declaration. You declare your methods globally, and you implement it locally. Mm -hmm. On each. Yeah, but you know, if we but like if we define an interface on the base class, then anything any child of that is going to get the. True. Is you know so it, it depends on where you define it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there's ways around all that if you don't want to keep redefining it and redefining it. But, yeah, I mean, interface is just basically telling Java, I'm going to implement these sets of methods. So you don't have to treat a pair of dice as a pair of dice. You can treat it as a lockable. That means we can throw pair of dice and account into the same list, right? So now we have two different objects. Java's not seeing it as two different objects. It's just seeing it the same because because we're saying they're lockable, all right? Yeah. All right. So let me do this example, or let me read um, the problem really quick. All right. So seven point eight. So this is something we're going to we're going to do in your midterm is write an interface called lockable that includes the following method: set key, lock, unlock, and is locked. The set key, lock, and unlock methods take an integer parameter that represents the key. 
the set met the set key method establishes the key. The lock and unlock method lock and unlock the object, but only if the key passed in is correct. The lock method simply returns a Boolean value to indicate if the method is locked or not. The lockable object, excuse me, a lockable object represents an object whose regular methods are protected if the object is locked. The methods cannot be invoked. If unlocked, they can, if unlocked, they can be invoked. Write a version of this for the coin, okay. But we're, I'm gonna do it for dice and for account. All right, so the interface is pretty simple. I'm just gonna come over here, right click, and create a new interface. Hit Java class, I'm gonna select interface, and the name of it was lockable. Okay, and the methods that I'm supposed to implement is public void um, set key. Actually, I don't need to do public. So void set key, you're gonna take in an integer that's gonna you can pass it the key. Okay, and then the other ones were void lock. Okay, and void unlock. And then um, Boolean is locked. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna implement it on the account first, because I kind of feel like that's probably like the easier place to do it. Oh, I forgot to put key right here. Okay, so what the book described is, we're gonna use set key to set the key. We're gonna use lock to lock the item. If the key passed in is correct, we're going to use unlock to unlock the item if the key passed in is correct. And then we're gonna have this Boolean value that we're gonna return if the item is locked or not locked, okay? So from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to account and let me just look at my methods really quick. I didn't actually memorize what I have in here. So I have deposit, I have withdraw, I have add interest. So I'm only gonna allow the get to, to work and the two string to work. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna come over here and to implement an interface, you just say implements, and then you name the interface. It's gonna be red, you just right click over here, you click implement these methods, okay? So I'm having to, whenever you implement this interface, you're having to store a key so that you know if, like, if something should be locked or unlocked. And you're also having to store a, val a Boolean variable to know whether you're locked. So that's something that you have to add to your class Okay, so I'm gonna say private int key and private boolean is locked. All right, so with those two variables, um, I can come down to where I implemented my interface and whenever you set the key, I'm just going, to, I don't know why we don't pass in a key and then have like the new key. I don't know, it doesn't make sense to me. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say this dot key is equal to the key that's passed in. And then when you wanna lock it, what we're gonna do is say if the key being passed in is equal to this key, the key on the object, then we're gonna say is locked to true, right? Pretty simple. I mean, we're just controlling that Boolean variable. And then we're gonna do the same thing up here, except we're gonna just do the opposite. Actually, let me see. Mm, I guess I, I could make it a little easier, but it might be a little more confusing. Um, so I'm gonna say key, if it's equal to the current key, then I'm gonna say is locked, false. All right, now what I'm gonna do for this is locked is I'm simply gonna return the variable this dot is locked. All right, pretty straightforward. I'm not actually doing anything with this value just yet. But what I could do is I can step, come over here to the posit and just say uh, if is locked, if it's not locked, then what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll go ahead and let them uh, deposit some some money. All right? If this is locked, then I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, or if it's not locked, I'm gonna let them go ahead and withdraw money. And 
I still got a return of double though. Dang it. So if it's actually, what we're gonna do? We're gonna just return the balance. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this right here. Okay, so this is where we actually modify the balance, but they're also returning the balance out of this method. So I'm still gonna return the balance. I'm just not gonna let them change it. I'm gonna do the same thing right here. Okay, so I'm not gonna call this line if it's locked. I'm gonna prevent them from actually modifying that balance. But I'm still gonna return the balance out of the method. And the same thing with add interest. So if you're not locked, then we'll go ahead and do that. And then the get and the two strings should be okay. Okay, so I added this interface. I had to implement things because uh, the interface doesn't actually define what the method does, right? It just defines what methods need to be implemented. All right, so I'm gonna hop over to my test and now what I'm gonna do, sorry, what's that? Wait, what do you mean? So is lock just returns whether it's locked or not? Yeah, so the de the default value for, so this, Java doesn't tell you this, but the default is zero, right? And the default for a Boolean is always gonna be false. And using set to initialize it. Yeah, uh, but we're, I'm, not, I'm not gonna have a getter and setter for, yeah. Right, because I have that lock unlock where they have to pass in the key. So I'm gonna hop over to my driver class, and now what I'm gonna do is, um, dang, how can I do this without doing a bunch of work? So here's my account test, right? Um, I'm not really modifying anything. Uh, this is what I'll do. I'll make another one called like public static void test account lock okay and i'm going to be like super creative here so whenever you call this i'm going to copy what i did here that seems like not a good way to do software reuse but screw it i was going to copy what i did here except that i'm going to uh after this I instantiate it I'm just gonna say account dot uh, lock and I'm gonna pass in a zero by default I'm gonna see if I like the account like all this should like not work and then I'm gonna say account dot unlock pass in a zero all this should now work right and then what I'm going to do is say account dot set key uh, 987. And then what I'm going to do is uh, call account lock. And I'm going to put a zero and then I'm going to do something like uh, system dot out dot print line. Account is, and then I'm going to grab account dot is locked, and if that is true, I'll just say locked, else unlocked. Looks like I have to wrap this with parentheses so that it doesn't get concatenated before running this piece of code, and every time I call lock or unlock I'm gonna print that out so there there and then I try to I change the key I try to lock it it wouldn't lock all right so I'm gonna just uh, run this test now now I have another test that I need to run so I'm gonna say dang, I don't know what to say for this we'll just say B even though it doesn't really correspond to uh, account lock test okay and then right here I'll just copy this paste it make this a B and run that yeah there you go 
All right, so here's my output down here. I'm gonna go ahead and run this. All right, so before I run it, I'm gonna run the normal account test with the A. So I typed in A, as you can see that there's my account after I instantiate my object, and then there's the my new balance, because I remember deposited 50, and then I withdrew, um, dang, I forgot how much I withdrew. 100, but then I drew as a $2.50 fee, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is run, I'm gonna type in B to run the, the lock. Okay, let's look at the output now. All right, so there, I intentioned my object, I locked the account, then I got the balance, it was 125. Remember I tried to deposit, or what did I try to do? Was it deposit? Yeah, it was deposit. It didn't work. Then I tried to withdraw, that didn't work. Then I unlocked it, and then I tried to run the same stuff, and it did work. And I tried to change, I set the key to a different value, 87, and then I tried to unlock it, or lock it, with zero, right? So let me let's scroll down to what I did. Um, right here, I set the key, and I tried to lock it with zero, and I just print out what the current state is, and because the key didn't match, it kept the, the count is still unlocked. Like I, it never got locked because I didn't match, I didn't pass in the correct key. All right, pretty simple, right? I mean, yeah, make the interface, implement the methods, lock, unlock, I mean, it's a pretty like simple idea. Now I'm gonna go ahead and slap this onto the pair of dice. So I'm gonna come up to my pair of dice, extend, oops, not extend, sorry, implements, and then I'm gonna say lockable gonna be red go to this little light bulb implement methods hit okay so it's now some instance data that I'm gonna need is an int for the key and a boolean whether it's locked or not okay all right so um, dang I could probably just copy what I did because I want to do it exactly the same way so I'm going to just <coughs> go over to account and set the same values. All right, I'm basically just controlling what I do with uh, the key and the Boolean variable. But now what I want to do is turn off setting face value and rolling so right here i'm just going to wrap this with um the check right so if you're not locked go ahead and perform that line same thing here and get face value get face value and then roll dice get some I guess that's still something we can do right because we're not really modifying the data we're just observing what the current sum is all right so I'm gonna hop over to my test test out this lock um, dang pair of dice is pretty long so I'm going to make another method called public static void test pair of dice lock all right and i'm just going to copy and paste i don't really need the equals method though because i'm not really checking that oh uh, i just want the yeah this is really all i need right here is the setters and the roll yeah all right i'm gonna copy this paste it here but why is this upsetting me? Oh, it knows it's duplicate. Okay, so I'm gonna lock, okay? And right, it's default to zero. Actually, let me just set the key first. So I'm gonna set the key. Let's say the key is one, two, three. So now if I wanna lock it, I need to pass in one, two, three. And then I'm gonna copy what I did here but I am going to 
unlock it right here. All right, and then that should let me roll and change stuff. And then what I'm gonna do is, I guess I don't, I mean, I could test to make sure I can't lock or unlock, but let me do a system out print line like I did for the account. Whenever I lock it, I put on the pair right here. So lock. All right. And where are sorry, you? All right. I unlock. And then I'll just do one test where I give it the wrong key. So I'll say uh, lock the dice again, but I'll put 789 and then you'll see that it stays unlocked. All right, so now I'm going to run. All right, before I run, oh wait, dang it, sorry. I forgot I need to add this option. So, so elemental P, Q, right? Oh, dang, I can't use Q. Uh, let's do N then. So I'm going to say run pair of dice, lock, test. All right, and I'm going to just copy what I did here, paste it, and then put a lock right there, and change this to N. Okay, so let me go ahead and run this. All right, so I'm gonna hit a, oh shoot, I'm not even the wrong, the wrong spot. All right, so I'm gonna hit a P to just run the pair of dice test. So pair of dice without using the lock, I instantiated my die, right? It's one, one, because I didn't set anything. Then I rolled my die, I got a two and a three. Then I set my die face values to five and one, and then I print out the value. Then I also did this checking for equality, but I'm not doing that in the lock test. Okay, so now when I run my lock test for the pair of dice, I'm gonna press N, and I'm gonna scroll up to get the results. Statue to my die, I tried to roll my die, it stayed one and one, the sum is two. I tried to set the face value to five and one, it stayed one and one. Sum is two. I unlocked my die and I printed out the object. Hey, did I print it? Hmm, okay. Then I rolled it. I got a three and a five. And then I set the face value to five and one. And then I tried to lock it like right before this line. And you can see that it remained unlocked because when I tried to lock it, I used a bad uh, key. So I wasn't able to actually unlock that value. All right. So now that I have a pair of dice uh, and an account that are both lockable. Now they have this what we call polymorphism where if I wanted to put them into the same container I can. So let me just test that really quick. So enter I don't know, M to run uh, polymorphism test. Poly Polymorphism. All right, polymorphism test. All right, and I'm going to have to make a new switch case here. And I'm just going to call it like test poly, and this will be M. All right, so what we mean by polymorphism is that the object can have, can be different things. So I'm going to say void test, yeah, test poly. Okay, so now I have an account. Okay, so say account, account one is equal to new account. And I believe you're supposed to pass in a username, you have the owner, let's say Mike, and an account number that is a long, so you gotta put the L there, and then 
a balance. Let's say we we'll have yeah. Yeah. All right. And then I'm going to make a pair of dice. It's going to be 1-1, one, one, and we're going to, uh, all right, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a list that is going to hold, actually, it's supposed to be a rate list. Sorry. It could be a list also, but list is actually interface, and, like, you have different types of list. I don't know when you're going to learn this, but at some point you're going to learn it. Uh, but one of the lists you can have is, is an array list, but since it's an interface, you can't actually instantiate a list you have to instantiate a type of list but anyways i can just slap in lockable here and just say like list is equal to new array list okay and this is upset because it wants me to import um import all right and it uh, looks like i'm good so far all i gotta do is add some lockable items inside of here and right now i only have two so I'm going to add the account, and then I'm going to add the uh, the die, the pair of dice. All right. So even though these are two different types of objects, I now put them into the same list because they both share the same interface. So I can just iterate through this list and just do something like, uh, let's see. So I could say lockable. Lockable, lockable inside of my list and I can do things like system out print line and uh, print out the to string by just passing the object to the console then I can just say like uh, we can lock the item oh, we don't know the, the value though though well, actually we do know the value because we didn't actually set the key. So I can call it lock, and then I can just say system out print line. And I can say is locked. And then print out lockable dot is locked. All right, so I'm basically just right now I'm only using like the lockable interface. But if I wanted to invoke methods specific to an account or specific to a pair of dice, um, I can do something like this. I can say like, okay, well, if lockable is an instance of instance of a pair of dice, okay, I just locked it. I want to try to roll the pair of dice. So I can do something like a system or I, I could do something like this. I know there's going to be like a lot of shorthand stuff, but okay. So let's see, pair of dice. I'm basically going to cast the pair, the lockable to pair of dice. Um, lockable dot roll. Okay, and I can say system dot out dot print line. Um, Actually, I'm printing out the object up here. So you'll be able to see the, 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 the values of it. And what I'm going to do is roll the dice and then print out the sum of the dice. Sum of dice. And I'm going to have to like... So what I'm doing in these parentheses is I'm basically forcing that lockable item to be a pair of dice. I know it's a pair of dice because I did this check right here. All right. And... Then what I'm going to do is uh, just call like get sum, All right? Get the sum, okay? And I'm going to do the same thing for the account. I'm just going to copy what I did there, except I'm going to put an else right there. I'm going to check to see if it's an instance of account. If it is an instance of account, I'm going to cast this object to an account, and I'll just say like uh, deposit. I'm going to deposit, you know, ten thousand dollars. $100,000 into the account. And since it's locked, it won't actually take effect. So then I'll just say account balance. All right, and I'll just call get balance. All right, 
pretty, I mean, I know that was, might seem a little complicated, but I mean, this is what polymorphism is, right? So I have an account object and a pair of dice object that both implement the lockable interface. When I inserted them into this list, I inserted them as lockable. I, I instantiated them, but Java is going to see them as lockable items only. So whenever I pull them out of the list, they're only lockable. But I can check to see if they're actually an instance of a pair of dice, or I can check to see if they're actually an instance of an account. And I can do different things on them, depending on what they are. So if, let me run this test. I forgot what I named it. Uh, M. So if I run test M, I'm going to iterate through my list that only has two items. I'm going to lock each item, and then I'm going to try to, like, change the value depending on whether it's a pair of dice or an account. So I'm going to compile. Like, actually, I'm thinking in Notepad++. Let's just go up here and run. All right, so to do my polymorphism test, for some reason I said enter an M. I'm going to enter an M, and there you go, it ran. So let's look at the results. So, dang, hold on. I don't like the way it looks. I wonder why I put this here. I must have thought I was trying to use a different type of lock. All right, let me go back to the bottom and do some, like just do like a system out print line to kind of cause some visual separation. So it's not like all ran together like the way it is here. Okay. Um, all right, let me re rerun this. All right, I'm gonna enter in an M. All right, so here is the account, okay? So remember I locked it before, like I printed out the object. So the two string of the account is printing this out. All right, so if I actually go to my account and then look for the two string. Let's see what it's doing. Yeah, it's just printing out the account number, the name, and the uh, the balance. But it's using the number format to we use the number format currency instance to print out the value as money. So there's my two string, and then here's my two string for my pair of dice. So I locked the account, and I said is account locked? True. Why is that not in a separate line? Hold on. They only do print, not print line. Where's my test? Oh, yeah, I did. So this needs to be print line so that this is locked can be like it's on you know, its own separate line. Let me rerun this test one more time. All right, so I'm going to rerun this, hit M, and you'll see that... Um, Asked if it's locked, it's true. So when I try to deposit the hundred thousand dollars, it did not actually work. And then for the pair of dice, uh, it is locked. So the sum of the die is two because I try to roll them, but it didn't actually roll. So it just stayed two. All right. Any questions on that? Like that's the whole idea behind polymorphism. Uh, I don't know how it just seems complicated or not complicated, but this is the kind of stuff you're going to do in the midterm is I'm going to give you like two classes and I'm going to say, okay, implement uh, the lockable interface on them and test it, right? Right. Write a class to test. Um, yeah. So let me just go over that one more time to help clear things up. So this is what the book wanted. Okay. It told you exactly what you want, what wanted. The only thing I changed that I didn't like is that it wanted you to have this method called locked. And I don't, to me, that's super confusing because locked with, uh, past tense and lock, which is, I guess, present tense. I, I don't know. Um, like, it's just too similar. A lot of times when a method returns a Boolean value, it's always good practice to put a is in front of it or has or something to where you're asking a question that can be yes or no. Right? We're saying is locked, meaning is this object locked? True, yes. Uh, false, no. Right? So that's why I decided not to use locked i used is locked it, it pretty much told you exactly what these how to implement these methods it said when you set your key you're going to have to remember that key when you want to lock it you're going to have to pass in a key that's going to match the key that you use in the set key when you want to unlock it the exact same thing so when i implemented this if you go to the count you can see that 
the set key basically just sets the key that I created here, right? I know the names are the same, which is kind of confusing, but that's just standard way of writing some of this stuff. Um, and the this reference means the key for this object. And if you don't put the this here, it's going to be the value that's coming in. Now, when I want to lock it, if they're going to have to pass in a key, if the key they pass in matches the key that I have stored, then I'm going to go ahead and allow it to be locked. They want to unlock it, same logic, right? I just set is locked to false. And then I just have this method called is locked. It's going to return whether the item is locked or not. I'm going to use that Boolean value to actually lock my account by just checking before I do any changes um, if it's locked or not. All right, any questions on that? Okay, so I will probably give you like another like a quiz on this. Um, dang, you know what? Maybe I'll just give you. You know, you should probably do this, the coin one, too. Yeah, you know, I'll just, I'll make it part of your homework then. So I'm going to go ahead and add um, 7.8, okay? But it wants you to implement it on the coin class. If you look at the Dropbox folder and go to examples, the coin class was in Chapter 4. I thought it was. Was it? Damn. No, I actually think it was five, right? Because that's when we learned about the if statements. Yeah, right here, coin flip. All right, so you're, you're basically, they basically want you to put a lockable on this, right? So you're gonna take this class, it's a coin, it's a class for a coin. You, you have instance data for face, and there is no actual setter though. Yeah, it's pretty interesting because they don't implement a getter or setter, it's just flip, and then, um, then you just call is heads. That's going to come back true, and then you have this two string that's going to return heads or tells, whether the face value is heads or tells. So there is no setter, and there is no getter. It's just flipping the coin, and then getting the value through the two string, or through the is heads. Okay, but you can put a lockable interface on that where you won't be able to flip the coin if it's locked. So I'm going to go ahead and add. Um, that problem. All right, and that should be then that should help you be more prepared for your midterm because I am going to ask you that lockable interface. All right, any questions? Do you have this on your YouTube? Uh, oh dang, did I record myself? Oh. No. Oh no, I am. I'm recording. Yes. <laughs> okay, it is on YouTube, and it, the code is also on Dropbox. So you go back. You know, go back and look at the. Oh, yeah. Dropbox. Uh, so last lecture, did you get to put that on Dropbox Yeah, I did put it. I actually did it this morning because, uh, like, normally after class is kind of late, I just go straight to bed and then I wake up, go to work, and then I forget. And yeah, but I I believe I put it there last night or this morning. I can't remember. But yeah, so I went ahead and organized those folders in Dropbox and I labeled what they actually are. So if you go to, remember, I had all these different workspaces. There's only workspace two, and I labeled each one. So I did do a, a chapter four example. I don't know if you guys remember that. That was like the very first thing where I did the bulb, the car, and all that. Um, there's an example for interfaces that I did once called interface example. There's also a visibility test. Remember when I just tested uh, protected, private, and yeah, did that one. That one. So all the examples are in this folder now, workspace two. And the one that I just did is chapter seven example. So I did want to continue and do more of an example where I was going to import this into student, but I'll do that some other time. I created this file and I was going to import it and I was going to change the student class to like not take addresses, just take a name and a GPA. And then I was going to show you how to use the comparable to sort and do all that stuff. But maybe I'll start with that on next week is finish this chapter seven example. So you know how the comparable works. Cause I didn't demonstrate the comparable here yet. Okay, so you guys are free to go. Um, see you guys next week.